Good morning everyone. Today is September 22nd, 2019. It is 57 but feels like 67 here in North Idaho. I'm Jody and welcome to Moose Flats Farm. Well, today I'm going to be uh, water glassing a bunch of eggs because it's funny in the spring and or more summer and early fall when egg production is doing good. We're out busy, we're not eating as many eggs and then come winter when the egg production starts to really decline, we increase our egg intake and I don't want to do like last year and we wound up having to go to the store and buying eggs. So I'm gonna, I did the research on the internet on how to water glass the eggs. It's been done since the 1800s. I don't see why it won't work for the 2000s. So I'll go through the steps of getting it all put together. So I have a three gallon pot. I've got, because I'm going to be doing a gallon of liquid. So for every quart of water, you do eight measured ounces by weight of the rehydrated lime. I know probably for demonstration sakes a clear container would have been better but I got a white plastic food grade bucket And then you just whisk the lime into the water until it's dissolved. Trying not to breathe in the dust. And you wind up with this milky, chalky looking liquid. So they recommend that you put the eggs uh, point side down. For the first layer, it's a little harder to do that. Okay. The eggs shouldn't float. That is interesting. All of the eggs are floating and these are fresh ones that I just got out of the chicken house this morning. And right here, because I didn't do a good job of explaining what I'm doing, I've got water in that cup and I'm checking the eggs and all the eggs sink right to the bottom. So they are good, just not sure what's going on.
and they recommend that you use clean eggs that have never been washed. So farm fresh is the best. So just checking my eggs over as I'm putting them in. And I'm not sure exactly why my eggs are floating because I did water test them and they're good. So probably we'll just put a plate over the top to keep them submerged and put a lid on and I'll check on them again in probably a month just to make sure they're not gone on the wayside. So, as you saw, I put the plate with that bowl to keep the eggs submerged. We'll just keep an eye on it and, like I said, check it in 30 days. But I'm going to set this in the pantry, get these egg cartons cleaned up, and then show you my predicament with the sauerkraut I was attempting to make. Well, there's that sauerkraut. It never bubbled like they said it's supposed to. It's really salty, so what I think I'm going to try <coughs> is rinsing it really good and then putting it in the dehydrator so I'm hoping the rinsing it will get rid of some of the salt or it's not even good to feed the chickens that much salt that's pretty strong so I'm gonna get this rinsed off and soaking and see how it tastes and hopefully be able to dehydrate well, I rinsed it, all four gallons, rinsed them off in a colander, have them now just sitting in a five gallon bucket of cold water. I'll check it tomorrow, maybe even later tonight, drain it down again and start over with some more fresh water, seeing if I can get some of the salt out of it. Tastes like, or it smells like really good sauerkraut until you taste and then it's all salty as get out so hoping I can rent some of the salt out of it so it wasn't a complete waste of time so I'll check in with you tomorrow afternoon to see whether I can dehydrate it for soups or if it goes into the trash well, I got a text from David John that we had an animal break in last night. Um, it's been about five and a half years since this said animal has been on our property because we put a six foot fence up and 
to keep this animal out, which is ironic because this animal is a moose, the, what our farm is named after. Evidently broke into the duck pen, so I haven't been up there yet, so I'm going to take you guys with me and shh, see how much damage was done. And yes, Kiesel is a guard dog. You wouldn't want to try to break into the house, but the outside here, not as much. Hi guys. Looks like right there is where it came through because I'm not seeing really anything up by the duck pen. Have to text Jave John and find out exactly where. Okay, so I'm going to take an educated guess because I haven't heard back from Dave John and he's at work right now as to what happened. They came in through the fence in the front, which is only a four foot fence. And in the process of dorking around by the koi pond, because I see evidence right over here of some plants smashed, which could have been when the ducks got out, but there's a tear in the fence. So I'll show you that and the fact that the koi pond is it was almost clear and now it's just muddy and you can barely see. So the fence right here has got a big hole and David John just texted me so let's see what he says. Going in ah. by the pond and I bent and zip, zip tied it back and also going out by the car driveway. Well, I'm not seeing where up here they came in, but I was also up at 3.30 this morning. He'll go right there, but I'll go back to showing you what I was. Yes, Valkyrie. So their fence is kind of jacked up right along in here. And then the plants here are all smashed down. And it's probably going to be harder with the sun. But as you can see, the bog is very, very dirty or not the bog, the pond. The bog is actually pretty clean. But it doesn't look like they did any slip slides into the pond. Which is a good thing because every time they seem to get into it they poke holes. And it's usually down in the deep part that they get the holes poked. So, tomorrow when David John's here get a little more info and we'll end the video showing the exact locations where the moose came in. Now I need to go in and get that cabbage dehydrated. Well I did two rinses on the coleslaw and it's not uber salty like it was last night when I took a bite and it just about killed me. So I'm going to put it on the trays to put in the dehydrator and it will be good just for grabbing a handful or two and throwing it in soup.
And I'm just glad that when he said the moose had busted up the duck fence, I was thinking the main big fence, and that would be definitely really bad. But at least it's something simple and to fix, but unfortunately the moose now knows it can come in through the four foot area. Don't want to fill this too heavy. And I'm hoping this all will fit on these trays. Or if it doesn't, I'll mix up a really light salty solution so that it keeps some of the salty and then because this should be dry by tomorrow if not this evening but it is a pretty wet mix so all I have left is basically one tray's worth I'll just probably put that in a jar with a really light salt solution and probably within the next day or two we'll be making a soup of some kind and can, it can get thrown in. And the other day, I didn't show you guys, but I... Here, let me go grab it. I'll be right back. So, the other day I tried... Uh, I soft scrambled a bunch of eggs and put them on parchment paper in the dehydrator and David John said don't do that one again it had a really weird weird smell um, but it's one of those it's a one to two ratio one spoon of this to equal amount like if you do a tablespoon of eggs you do two tablespoons of water and you're supposed to let it sit for 10-20 minutes to rehydrate it. Uh, my food chopper that I bought definitely didn't grind this into a powder so it's gonna it'll be really good for baking not so much for eating because I think it would be kind of grainy tasting but we're going to be ordering a food mill that maybe this would be able to go into that and get finer ground so it's like a true powder and can make scrambled eggs out of it the just trying to learn and find different ways to save and preserve eggs especially going in the winter when production does go down and i don't want to buy them at the store so Keep you guys informed as far as this goes and the cabbage it'll probably be done for t the rest of tomorrow's video and like i said we'll find out from david john exactly where he thinks the moose came in and the moose went out as if life couldn't get more interesting I got two little girls and one big girl out of their pen and they're like, ooh, look at the bog. What am I going to do with you guys? Okay, so actually I think the big dark one was a drake because he didn't sound like this one he was a lot quieter and the drakes usually are they make a hissing sound but got this one just have to put her back in catch her sister and I don't think they're going to be in this pen anymore thanks to the Moose, they figured out how to get out. Hmm. Think a week in their con concentration camp pen 
We'll make them stay in. So that's where I'm going to end today's video and the moose evidently came in the front of the property from the road and kind of bent that down. going to T-post it up so the fence doesn't fall over. And what happened was it had stepped over the green fence with its front feet fine. The back feet evidently got caught up in it and it just smashed a couple of my posts down. So that was the fence that David John was talking about that the moose destroyed. But I'm gonna be taking this down because I have to go into town and get the fence or the roofing material and we'll need this driveway. Plus, as you saw just a minute ago, the Muscovies have realized, ooh, we can get out. So I have to rethink this, keep them in their pen for a little while just to reprogram their brains that they're supposed to stay in a fence. So I hope you all have a good day and a good week, and I'll see you on Thursday's video. Bye.